So OpenAI and Sam Altman are up to something. There's a flurry of activity. We're still not 100% sure what's happening, but let's take a look at what might be happening. Subscribe for more sweet AI content. OpenAI has been relatively quiet. They've announced a few things that some of which haven't even rolled out yet, like the voice mode for ChatGPT. And today we find out why they have been relatively quiet and also potentially why that's about to change. So first and foremost, Chinese developers scramble as OpenAI blocks access in China. If you're an OpenAI developer, if you use their API to do various projects and you provide access to those projects to the whole world, you might have received an email from OpenAI saying that they're limiting some countries from accessing those features. Now, this isn't completely unexpected. This isn't completely new. So OpenAI last month announced plans to crack down on China-based AI developers. Now, by default, you can't access OpenAI in China. There's a firewall, but a lot of Chinese AI developers are getting around that. But these developers have come up with fiendish ways to get around the firewall by using, well, virtual private networks, VPNs, as you might have expected. Now, some of the AI researchers in China have said that this move caused significant concerns within China's AI community. They're saying the decision raises questions about equitable access to AI technologies globally. Now, the cynic in me is wondering, do they use that word equitable unless they're talking to Western reporters? I mean, is that a, is that a thing that gets talked about or is that more kind of like PR for the Western world? I'm genuinely curious because reading some of the Chinese AI research papers, they're really good at... I guess you would call it localization, like certain things they publish doesn't just get translated word for word. It also gets changed to appeal to that country or that population. Now, the rumor mill is going crazy. A lot of people are asking if this means that OpenAI is getting ready for another big release. They're wondering if they're going to throw out a new model, GPT-5 perhaps, or maybe API updates of some sort. There does seem to be some other changes. It looks like they're adding new domains, EU, API, OpenAI that were added yesterday. So Tibur is asking, it sounds like the rest of the world is getting new models or API updates soon. Let's come back to that in just a second, because there might be a clue as to what OpenAI is going for in terms of how they release their new products and new models. There's some new data about that, but let's come back to that in just a second. So I'm sure most people are on some level familiar with this person, Ariana Huffington. So she is the co-founder of the Huffington Post and more importantly for what we're talking about, the CEO of Thrive Global. But anyway, she mentioned this article that is in Time Magazine called AI Driven Behavior Change Could Transform Healthcare. It's written by her and Sam Altman. They're talking about the problem that we're facing with health the cost of healthcare, chronic disease, etc. But they're saying behavior change can be a miracle drug, both for preventing disease and for optimizing the treatment of disease, which is true with things like optimized sleep, nutrition, exercise. There are tons of stuff that can be done without assisting, without needing to go to the hospital or visiting a doctor. But behavior change is hard. But through hyper-personalization, they say, it's also something that AI is uniquely positioned to solve. So the idea is to use AI, large language models, so something like ChatGPT that knows a lot about you, your habits, maybe some of your medical files, what you're trying to achieve, and is able to coach you through how to do that. And these are the ideas behind Thrive AI Health. The OpenAI Startup Fund and Thrive Global are jointly funding to build a customized, hyper-personalized AI health coach that will be available as a mobile app. And also, I guess they're going to have some sort of an enterprise side of it. Here's the thing, I could see this working. I could see this working really, really well. People that are tracking their calories and macronutrient profiles, et cetera, tend to eat better. Just the idea of being aware of what you're eating and how many calories it has and how that fits with your, within your daily macro allowance, that by itself makes you a little bit more intelligent about what you eat and how what choices you make. There was another study where they took a number of hotel housekeepers or, or part of the cleaning crew that kind of, uh, you know, tidies up your hotel room when you're done with it. And half them were told about how good the activities or cleaning are for your weight loss and uh, health efforts, that it's like a good exercise, how many calories you burn per day, just doing that. And they found that that group of people started moving more, burning more calories because it was just more intentional. So just having somebody that, as they put it, offers real-time nudges and recommendations, 
yeah, I genuinely could see this being a big deal for somebody that needs to take little micro actions, little tiny steps towards health. I've been messing around with building my own kind of voice AI assistants. They use various language models like Claude 3.5 or GPT 4.0. I've showcased them on this channel and I constantly think, wouldn't it be nice to be able to use that in this particular scenario? For example, if you're doing a workout, something that can log how many sets you're doing, how many reps you're doing over a particular exercise, the weights that you're using. You can just verbally say, okay, I did eight reps, 40 pounds, and that gets logged somewhere so that the next time that you're working out, you can ask, okay, what did I do last time? Currently, you're either using an app for that where you're like tracking, you're typing in the numbers, or maybe you just use a pen and paper, but both cases, that takes you out of the exercise. You have to stop and write it down because you might not remember every single rep and weight that you used at the end of the workout. Same thing for using something like AI vision to where you take a snapshot of what you're eating and it automatically gets tracked as calories, proteins, carbs, fats, etc. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate, just a rough estimate of what you're eating tracked every single day with no friction, no frustrations. It just gets easily tracked in your own personal app with all your personal details. And then you being able to use it later, you know, say, oh, I felt really good the whole last week in the mornings, felt great. What was I eating? And it's able to reference that data, give you recommendations, etc. Now, what's interesting about kind of what OpenAI is doing is right now, it seems like they were being fairly quiet, no big new releases. But at the same time, there's a lot of like, rumors and whispers about all the stuff that they're doing across the board. So for example, here, they're partnering up with a health startup. A lot of people have mentioned that they're talking to a lot of the Hollywood studios about using something like Sora to start developing movies. Meanwhile, we're hearing almost daily news of various other companies that are approaching or outperforming GPT-4, GPT-4.0. For example, here, Chinese AI company SenseTime takes the lead with SenseNova 5.5. Reports say that it has outperformed GPT-4.0 across key metrics. So here's J.R. Kibbs saying they are the only ones to have grown significantly recently. So they are no longer afraid to take their time before releasing their next model. General public is not aware of the benchmarks. And even for those of us that are aware of the benchmarks and kind of know who's in the lead or not, I got to say, I mean, I, I'm, I am kind of dismissive of the benchmarks. Yeah, I'll take a look at them. And if something's like dominating that, to me is interesting. I will look further to try to figure out how good that model is, but I just don't take it at face value. But the point of all this is this chart. So this is desktop and mobile web visits worldwide. That blue line, well, that's ChatGPT, right? Approaching 3 billion visits. And this rocket ship like growth, this was around April, 2024. Can you guess what caused that? Why did it take off like that after being kind of a in, a in a holding pattern for a while. By the way, these are the other models. So we have Google's Gemini here in orange. Character AI, a very interesting company, we have to look at it more, is kind of crazy for a lot of different reasons. Not only because of who the founders are, but also how many visits it gets and also what people use it for. We'll look at that in a different video. And below here, we have Perplexity AI and Claude AI. Now, to me, it's very strange looking at this chart because this, to me, is very surprising. Because being deep into this stuff every day, I'm thinking, oh, Claude is nose to nose with Chad GPT, etc., just because of that's what people are talking about. But the reality is the majority of the people out there probably can't name the Google AI model. They're not going to say it's Gemini. Most people have no idea what perplexity AI is, right? Everybody knows Google. People know Bing. No one knows perplexity AI. People know ChatGPT. They don't know Claude as much. It's a tiny fraction of the amount of people that have at least heard of ChatGPT. So what this is showing to me, and take this with a grain of salt, I don't know this for a fact, but it sure seems like OpenAI is feeling very comfortable in its position as the worldwide leading AI model. Also notice what happens whenever it releases the next best thing. Very quickly, there are 10 different copycats that are trying to get closer to it and succeeding. Their announcement of Sora was earth shattering. Everybody was just minds blown. But now we're having the releases by Kling AI, Runway Gen 3, 
Luma AI. And like I say, all of those are looking really good. I don't know if they're as good as Sora or not. We don't know if the examples we saw from Sora are cherry picked the best of the best or just your average outputs. But it does seem like usually when OpenAI releases something within six months, you get a number of other companies that catch up and do either as good or almost as good. So if I had to guess, I think OpenAI is probably laying the groundwork to be everywhere all at once every single time the next big thing that they have gets released. They want to have the groundwork for having that health app, the coach. They want to have some deals with the Hollywood studios. They want their API to be everywhere they want it to be and not showing up in all the places they don't want it to show up like China because that could potentially maybe cause problems because of the whole US-China conflict thing that's happening on the AI front. So once the next big thing rolls out, they already want it plugged into everywhere with users, with applications, with everything before, you know, basically on day one. Because as soon as they release it to the public, that clock starts ticking where everybody else is able to, for example, train their own models on the outputs of OpenAI models, create something similar or better. So I think the goal is going to be here to release into an already existing infrastructure with everything plugged in. Now, if you're wondering why there's this rapid growth, I mean, this was around the time they announced the voice engine, but we still don't have the voice engine. What that growth, I think, is is the fact that now you can access ChatGPT 4.0, you can access it for free. You can access it without logging in. If I open up an incognito window, I can use ChatGPT without logging in, without signing in, without creating an account. With the free plan, you get limited access to GPT 4.0. The best model in the world is free to the whole world now. So this to me feels like the calm before the storm. I don't think they're giving away everything for free because there's nothing bigger coming. I think number one, there's something really big that is being prepared for release. Number two, I don't think they're going to be as focused on selling it to the consumer, right? So the $19 a month chat GPT subscription, that's not their main focus. I think they want to sell it to enterprise businesses, to Hollywood to these AI health companies so they can make apps for the end consumer or sell it on the enterprise side to Apple, for example, right? That was the big announcement that they're going to be integrated with iPhones. And I think that's the game plan. They want to be plugged into Apple and Hollywood and all those places. So when they roll out the next big model, it just gets updated and it's live on all those devices and all those places at once. Here's Noam Brown. He's researching reasoning at OpenAI. He co-created the first superhuman no limit poker AI and he co-created Cicero. We talked about Cicero just a little bit on this channel. So if you imagine a game like Risk where you're supposed to take over the world, but imagine that there's much more diplomacy where you're able to negotiate with other players and make alliances, break those alliances and basically work together to try to survive or take over the world. Very strategic game, very social game in a sense that you have to understand what your opponents are thinking because they're not really your opponents, they can be your allies, your opponents, however you kind of define that relationship. Well, Cicero, co-created by this person, became as good as the top world players of that game. An agent that can play at the level of humans in a game as strategically complex as diplomacy is a true breakthrough for cooperative AI. Jan LeCun. So they're describing it as a dialogue-aware strategy, which is that's a great way of putting it, like it's a strategy game based on you have to be aware of the dialogue that you've had with all the opponents. The point being is this is an accomplished person in the realm of AI and he's working at OpenAI and today he posted this. When I joined OpenAI a year ago, I feared ChatGPT's success might shift focus from long-term research to incremental product tweaks, which that is kind of the perception by some from the outside of what OpenAI is doing, right? Just put our product and tweak it here and there to improve it. And that's the status quo now. But he's saying, but it quickly became clear that that was not the case. OpenAI excels at placing big bets on ambitious research directions driven by strong conviction, which by the way, this is kind of Sam Allman's MO if you look at how his investment career kind of went, what he says is the secret to a lot of his success in terms of investing in startups is he focuses on long-term projects that require a lot of capital. And he's saying there's not a lot of people competing in that space. People want a quick return. 
people don't want to be placing big bets on some future ambitious project or goal. And so if you're able to do that and you're able to do it successfully, the payoffs are huge. And here Gnome is kind of supporting that OpenAI is still going in a direction, that that is still happening. They're still placing big bets on ambitious projects that are long term, that are far away, and that they stand by them with conviction. Meanwhile, it seems like the OpenAI team is busy behind the scenes. I think because of how many people are trying to glimpse into what they're doing and try to pull out any shred of evidence for something new coming out. Now they're actually attempting to hide their various new experiments by kind of masking them by not making them obvious. It looks like what used to be called ChatGPT included in voice alpha. So I'm assuming that's the voice demo, the voice engine that's rolling out to a small select group of alpha testers, right? So maybe it seems like it got renamed to whatever, 3199, whatever, some string of numbers to kind of like try to hide that a little bit, not make it as obvious. So as excited as I am about all the various new progress and new features that are being rolled out by all the other AI models, the different text to video platforms, Anthropic's new releases have been phenomenal. But as exciting as all those developments are, I do think that OpenAI is cooking up something crazy and secret in their underground lab. And I think it's gonna be scorched earth as soon as it gets released because it will rapidly get applied to all the projects that they're building infrastructure for right now. That's my guess. By the end of the year, I'll let you know if I'm right or wrong and I'll reference this video. In the meantime, this person, Nakalecha, is saying that they're convinced they can automate all of Factorio using language models. And it looks like they're going to be using uh, the open source Llama 3 or their own kind of version, their own fine-tuned version of it. It seems like it's beginning to play Factorio on its own. I don't know about you, but to me, this is incredibly exciting and interesting. And just it's fascinating to watch something about automating games with large language models something about that is just incredibly exciting to me. I, I I don't quite know why, but I can't wait till this is more of a reality when it's more approachable for the average person. I've experimented doing botting back in the world of Warcraft, if you know what that is, but they were just simple script-based bots. And a lot of people didn't like the fact that people were botting that game. I get that but there is some strange fascination and satisfaction for me, and I know a lot of other people as well, from creating little systems like that, little automations, little bots that run around and do your bidding 24 seven that you can tweak and optimize and make better. And of course, large language models with vision, reasoning skills and the ability to interact with these games, that will be the next big thing on that front. By the way, if any of you are building something like this, something similar, something at the intersection of AI, specifically large language models and things of that nature and games, automation, stuff like that, let me know. I want to help in whatever way I can. Happy to provide some coverage on the subject, especially if you're making content with it, like video or tutorials. If you're making anything that's going to be useful for people either with a tech background, but also non techies, if it's useful for them to get into this world, if it helps them learn and kind of dip their toes in the waters of working with LLMs. If you're doing anything like that, let me know. I'm happy to shine a light at it in whatever way I can. With that said, my name is Wes Roth and thank you for watching.